everybody, and welcome to Light News Radio, Realms of Self-Empowerment, now in our fifth year, bringing you topics on the mind, body, spirit, and the tools and techniques to awaken you to higher states of consciousness. I am Dr. J, your host, and my wonderful, amazing, and co-host here today is Deirdre Layton. Please do share and follow these. We certainly do want you to uh, be able to uh, view our programs. And of course, if uh, you missed today's program, we always archive them on YouTube Light News Radio page. So together, we bring you Grounded Metaphysics, where, you're the, where the spiritual rubber hits the road, real life teachings and applications that are pertinent and relevant to you. Here you can breathe the fresh air of real consciousness education while avoiding the hype and fascination. We are all about assisting you to empower your life through understanding your true spiritual nature. So come aboard our beam of light and enlighten your load <laughs> as we travel the waves of knowledge and wisdom for the next hour. So I have two announcements. <laughs> One, <clears throat> I just returned from Japan, Tokyo. It was my fourth trip to Japan. And I seem to have gotten a serious case of jet lag and then a cold introduced itself to me and shook hands with my immune system. And I think the cold is winning right now, so I apologize for that. And secondly, as I have with us today, Deirdre Layton, who has not been on our show a couple of times. She's been otherwise very busy. <clears throat> and I'll let her uh, speak to you when she comes online. So I'm going to bring her on camera right now. And she should again. I've decided to go back to Facebook Live simply because uh, when we do the program on uh, Zoom or on YouTube, um, we can't really have people live. I've tried it on Zoom, or rather on, uh, yeah, on Zoom, <clears throat> but we've only had like one or two people on. So this way I can show you Deirdre Live, and we've got also people coming on and asking questions. So hello. <laughs> uh, you've got a horrible cold i can hear it <laughs> i know well, you know you know how i always say trust your intuition and then trust your practical mind right yes <clears throat> and so my intuition said lay down and rest before the radio program so i've had two sessions before this today and my my logical mind says you will do these sessions on helps the people. But then my intuition said, you will do these sessions and help the people. <laughs> so I said, well, what am I going to do? So I had been actually laying down and resting so that I have enough energy. And then I'll get on the uh, oxygen right after our program today. <laughs> oh, that's good. No. Yeah, <laughs> it's been, my life's been a little crazy. And uh, so it's been, it, it, but it's starting to settle down a little bit now, I think. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I'll, uh, um, I've been back and forth to British Columbia on Vancouver Island listeners. Um, my mom was ill from September till March and she just recently passed away. So my brother and I are, are wicking through all of that. And uh, we thank you for everyone's support because my Facebook page was blown up by you know, everyone sending condolences and well wishes. And I, I must say thank you very much for that. It's very, very much appreciated. Well, certainly um, you, Dee, and your family had all of our prayers and our support. And for those of you that don't know um, about Light News, um, I've been teaching a form of um, energy medicine for many years. And, of course, Deirdre is a highly qualified instructor as well. Um, called Integrative Chakra Therapy, and we put out these healing requests. So if someone has an illness or an infirmity or if someone makes a transition, you know, we'll put out a healing request to many, many uh, students and graduates across the U.S. and Canada. And we go into prayer and meditation as, as we see fit, you know, as we tune in. <clears throat> and so we did the same thing with, of course, Deirdre and her mom and her family, you know, because... These times are, are very difficult and they're very trying. And as Deirdre well knows, you know, after a person passes away, I think Deirdre would be the first one to tell you there's also a whole raft of work <laughs> that is required then. Some of it is very perfunctory and some of it is very emotionally connected. Yes, yes. 
It's been a bit of, it's been a bit of work. I must say that um, knowing how to stay centered and grounded and knowing when to go into meditative state and to, you know, relax mm -hmm. and refresh is really important. Yes. And um, I've had a couple of really beautiful experiences. Um, I had a juvenile bald eagle fly um, past and, and land on the road in front of our vehicle, which we actually slowed down and stopped so he could do that. And he picked up a, a little shrew or a mouse and then flew into the tree right beside me, like just inches away from the window of the truck and uh, proceeded to stare in at me. And I just, you know, knew it was, it was a true spiritual connection. And, and uh, it, it was, so I've had a few little things that have occurred since her passing that have been so refreshing mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> enlightening, enlightening. Yeah. Yeah. So, but when I was, uh, Oh, go ahead, I was going to say, you know, we, um, I, I don't think people really understand uh, true spiritual connection. Now, I'm, I'm, and I may be offending people, and I'm sorry if I am, but when you truly connect with someone in their last moments, in their last breaths, um, it is something that I, I'll honor for the rest of my life. You know, it mm -hmm. definitely is a life-changing experience. Yeah. It's very, it's very sobering because it has a finality to it on one side. And on the other side, our teachers always tell us it's only a, a movement from one form to the next. But, you know, I, my hat's off to those people who work in hospice yes. who, you know, people do go there to make their transition. And um, I've known several people, uh, one woman who was the president of a hospice here in San Diego. And they all seem to have that characteristic of it's an honor to be in this form of work where, you know, you're there to help assure that person and help calm them that it's not a frightening experience at all. Yeah, and, and it's just the opposite. And and you know, my mom um at one point was quite frightened and, and asked me to stay uh with her and the, that was the night that we did go into hospice care. Uh but the nurses mm -hmm. were absolutely phenomenal and my mom's only wish from Tuesday up until up until the day she passed was to have her hair washed. And, you know, even though she couldn't communicate the day that they did that for her, it was such an honor. And uh, yeah. it was very moving for that. So there are beautiful souls out there. And I wish to thank them all because uh, it really, it really is something that is, uh, well, you can't explain it. You just can't explain it. Yeah. Quite an experience. Well, there, there, there really are, even though there aren't, there really are levels upon levels of spiritual awakening. Um, you know, I was just in Japan, and <clears throat> the story there is, uh, this is my fourth time. Three of those times was to go to the Tamamitsu Jinja. Tamamitsu is like the, the Shinto a word for God, and Jinja is like shrine or temple. And uh, my main teacher, Dr. Hiroshi Motoyama, was head priest there, but his life was a life as a philosopher and a, a um, scholar and a scientist. And so he's the one who founded the California Institute for Human Science that you hear me speak about so much. Dr. Motoyama. And because Dr. Motoyama, and because um, I am Dr. Hiroshi Motoyama, yes. and because I'm the chair of the board. Sorry, I'm not feeling well, so <laughs> I'm not talking too clearly, but anyway. In my capacity as chair of the board, you know, I, I went there last year to help secure a pledge to financially support uh, CIHS, but more importantly, the spiritual support, and to let the, the board and the membership there know that we are in fidelity to Dr. Moriyama's philosophy, not so much to him personally, 
but to the philosophies that that he put forth. Yes. Right. So we don't we don't worship the man. We worship you know what he represented. Right. The the truth, or truths. Anyway, my point about spirit is. Uh, there's a high point in April of every year in Japan, which is the Cherry Blossom Festival. And I took many photos, and it's it's quite breathtaking. You know, where the shrine is is Inokashira Park in Tokyo, which is uh, right around a little lake. And they have these huge cherry trees. You wouldn't think they were so big, but huge. So anyway, there's a ceremony Monday at the Jinja that I was allowed to take part in, and I did last year as well. And... In the ceremony, um, I was meditating, and of course, the, the this particular uh, Jinja, the Shinto there, um, uh, recognized nature spirits, huge nature spirits. And, and in every area, wherever you live, there's always a governing nature spirit. And so my point to you with your bald eagle representation is that when I was in meditation with all of these people, I gave thanks to the nature spirits of the air, of the area, and in that moment, a beautiful songbird started singing somewhere outside that I've never heard before or since that day. But it was only in the moment that I gave great gratitude to the presence, the existence, and the support of the nature spirits. And you know, we have to remind ourselves that <clears throat> we are as much a spirit yes. as a bird. Any plant or any tree or any lake yes. or the, the earth, the, the dirt of the earth, the rocks. And, you know, it really is true. We are inseparable from all things. And so, you know, when Deirdre says, you know, this eagle landed on the ground, you know, there's a reason for that. It's not just, oh, I'm a tourist. Look, get your camera. There, there's more to it than that. And some people in indigenous traditions and others, they call this walking in the beauty way you recognize that you're in constant communion with all nature. And, you know, I'm, I'm the first one to, you know, try to buck the trend, like even today, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling well, and I felt so intuitively to do this show after. And, of course, right after the show is over, I'm going to be... <laughs> <laughs> do you agree? I agree. I agree. No. It's uh, it's humbling to experience something like that, um, and very yeah. surreal. Very, very surreal. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm still um, going through, you know, the processes, and it's going to take some time, especially when I pick up the cell yeah. phone or or uh, go to give her a call. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's. It's yeah. a, um, it, it really is a different experience uh, now for life. Yeah. And, and that, and, and you know, it's interesting too, because the premise of Light News Radio, you know, we're almost five years into this in June uh -huh. of doing Light News. The premise of Light News Radio is self-empowerment from a spiritual perspective that we, you know, we really do know who we are as spiritual beings having a physical existence. But how do you get the rubber to hit the road? And so <clears throat> when we are walking our talk and someone dear to us passes away and we have a bunch of teachings in our head where the teachers say, well, there is no death, there's only transition. But when it happens to you, then it becomes highly personal and really tests your faith in, in what you believe and, and in what you hold is sacred and what you hold is true. And I think people, when they embark on a spiritual path, uh, path have... I was going to say trail and path. When they, a spiritual path, they all have the best of intentions. And yet there's so many different levels of understanding. You walk into a metaphysical bookstore and you see candles, incense, cards, tarot decks, angel decks, tapestries. And yet, <clears throat> is that the spirituality or is it something else? Well, I, I mean, that's... It, go ahead. You know, I think that... Um experiencing the life the way I have been over the last, you know, five and a half months uh, made me do a lot of inner looking and inner work. And I think that when you look at spirituality, I mean, there's a lot of people that want it right now. 
and so they they go to these yes. stores for the cards and the and because they want their answers right now but yeah a after this life experience you know the answers are always there like i really i my whole outlook now has shifted the answers are always there it's whether or not you're willing and able to listen or to feel mm -hmm. or to understand or comprehend because that inner connection to whatever divine source is for you is on 24 seven mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. But are you truly listening and paying attention? Mm -hmm. Are you truly uh, looking within and and taking that moment to understand how you work and why everything around you works the way it is. And I, and I, I just taught levels 10 and 11 this past weekend to a group of students. And it right. was profound in the way that I had a completely different understanding of those two levels and being able to mm -hmm. express it, I felt was more accurate and more clear in the understanding mm -hmm. of what, what spirituality and metaphysics are compared to the science sure. side of things, you know? Sure, and, and when you're the one teaching it, you have the responsibility of how to make the understanding of the spiritual truth of the human being relative to the people you're teaching. I mean, levels 10 and 11 out of the 18 levels that we teach are really where the rubber hits the road because that's about possession or being possessed. And I know people, sometimes when they hear that, they instantly Run. become dismissive. <laughs> but it's simply, it's simply out of ignorance. It's not out of, and I don't mean ignorance is a bad word. It's just that if you're going to learn how to do energy medicine which really is spiritual healing if you're going to learn how to do it then that's a part of it otherwise there's no point in doing it i mean for me personally i mean there's there's a million energy practitioners out there right and so there's lots of ways of approaching it but for me it was all based on the theories of the chakras and dominant chakra theory and you know that's where the rubber hits the road so when you're teaching like you did last weekend that's the responsibility of a teacher is to help those students become spiritually powerful within themselves so they can help everybody else. Exactly. Exactly. I think that's why I think that's why I think that's why today I didn't want to start out with a subject and make it more of a zeitgeist, you know, spirit of the moment like I was been such a long time since you've been on the radio program. I kind of felt like I should turn a lot of it over to you because of the revelatory experiences that you've had and, you know, the genuineness you convey, you really do D and, uh, you know, people that take courses from you, they really honestly benefit and they keep coming back. Well, thank you. I, I, uh, I feel a lot or a lot more. That's really not very good English. I feel more empowered. I feel more, um, in tune to what my calling and my true nature is now from this experience. Yeah. Um, it was interesting because for two days before my mom transitioned, I would be driving to the hospital and my father was sitting in the passenger seat of the car for two days. And your father passed away. 21 years ago. Your father passed away 21 years ago. Yeah. yeah. And he was sitting there. And then the day that mom transitioned, my aunt and I were the last to leave the uh, last to leave the hospital. And, and I gave her a kiss on my mom, a kiss on the forehead as we were leaving the room. And as, uh, as I left, my aunt and I both said, okay, you know, you can come, you can come with us if you wish. And we left and got in the car and, and uh, she went and picked up a few things and went to meet me at the house. And I got in the car and started driving. And of course, the light turns red and I'm slowing down for the stoplight. But before I even put my foot on the brake, I very clearly heard, okay, you can slow down now. <laughs> 
So did he used to say that? Before? My mom, my mom was sitting beside me. And Your she, mom. Oh. And she was like, you can slow down now. Like, and, and it was kind of metaphoric in a lot of sense, you know, like, yes, I can slow down in my driving. Yes, I can slow down in how I'm going to move forward now with the preparations and with life. Oh. And, and, you know, it was, it was very, uh, very, um, uh, metaphorical along that whole whole way and then on Saturday as I was driving up to teach I was you know second guessing my skills and all those things the stuff that the little mind does as you're as you're preparing and I felt both of them yeah. sitting beside me in the front seat of the car and I actually felt someone reach over and hold my arm as if to say, you've got this. Don't oh. worry about it. So, you know, they're, <laughs> they're, they're very much, very much still around me, just as I very much feel Dr. Moriyama uh, around me when I, when I go into meditation or if I'm, you know, doing flower readings or past lives or anything like that. I really feel him and his presence. So... Mm -hmm. And I never yeah. met the man, but I, I know he's with me. And he's come through me many times for channeling. So, You know, I, I think there's some YouTube videos of him. I'll have to take a look. I mean, the one, the, <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw that one when we um, do the video for level two and we show the light yes. coming out of nowhere. Yes. You know, the woman is sitting in the shielded room and she produces a light from another dimension. <clears throat> well, after that, on the same DVD, is uh, an interview about him, and there's a couple of, uh, what do they call, B-roll shots, you know, where they show him, um, you know, teaching, uh, and he had a unique way of speaking, sometimes very difficult to understand because his, his accent was so heavy that sometimes you had to listen twice. And I facilitated workshops with him before where he and I would teach for a weekend. And I would just try to amplify because I'd look at the faces of the people <laughs> to see if they understood. They were kind of like, hmm, what's he say? So yeah, I, I think that there's some videos out there that you can look at and get a feel for it, to put the, you know, the face and the, the mannerisms to the, what you feel about him. Yes, because I know I've been quite accurate at times when he has come through and had to speak to you or speak to students about different policies and procedures along the way, especially when you were teaching Carmen reincarnation that last time. He was very present oh, at that. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he was a realized yogi. You know, so he was truly an awakened spiritual people person. And I think, you know, that for so many people, when you say that, it's just something that you read, but we really don't have an appreciation for what it is. It's like reading about a forest or standing in the forest. They're two different in things entirely. Because right. The experience is so, it, 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 it so captures your soul, you know, to be standing in the midst of a, a temple of a forest, right? Right. Yeah. So... Yeah. And, you know, these, t these times are intensifying, you know, they, I, oh. you know, it's so weird because I used to talk about this since the early 1990s. I used to say, you know, it's going to get more intense. It's going to get more intense. And well, it, and it look is. At it and you're, yeah, of course, you're a Canadian and you look at our colorful president and you probably shake your head. But, Agent Orange. But, Ooh, you know, did I say that out loud? <laughs> Agent Orange. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, but you know, we are, we are living in a times where I, I've invented my own word. Hey guys, you should know that Deirdre is famous for what are called deisms. She makes up her own words, which make perfect sense. But I came up with one on my own. I call it repetifying. Everything is repetifying, <laughs> happening much more quickly. Er. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's, uh, clear. yes, it's a, it's a little it's a little bracing because there's a lot of things that are unwinding that we thought were very tightly wound and things we thought we could trust like in the even in the like in the 80s and 90s sports heroes being defrocked because they had gambling habits or because they had some other thing that you know children looked up to these sports heroes as as a, a virtue that you'd want to become and they go what they did what yeah 
And so, you know, we're still looking for our heroes now. Oh, we are. And I think the true heroes are the people who stand in the power of their own virtue and that are unswayed by the exigencies, you know, all the little emergencies around us, the people that stand in the power of their own inner truth, no matter what's going on around them. And I think that takes a lot of courage. <clears throat> it really takes a lot of inner strength. But, you know, Deirdre, I think you certainly are one of those people. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, I, you know, um, over the next little while. He hangs around with me, so I hope that means good things about me, too. <laughs> over the next little while, I'll be uh, having some huge shifts, too. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the changes, and I'm looking forward to embracing all of that's coming because, um, as you say, things are, uh, things are speeding up, not just on a superficial level, but I'm noticing more and more that students come into the program are way ahead of what students were like coming into the program seven years ago or um, oh, yeah. way ahead of their understanding. And so the, the course is turning and, and manipulating, or not manipulating, morphing and changing as, Morph. we, yeah. as we manipulate it to suit the needs of those that are coming in. And I found this weekend that the discourse and discussion were, was just, it, it was amazing. So, of course, we had uh, Susan Kwan and Bev Wine there, who are both very, very strong spiritual leaders in, in their own way and, uh, qualified. And, and qualified teachers. And so, you know, and, and Cindy Sue will be soon as well. And she was there. So it's, it's, it's just lovely to be able to share these experiences and to have these mm -hmm. discussions and then the feedback um, of their interpret interpretations. Because, you know, even though we are teaching a course that you have developed and that came to you, everyone is going to interpret it just that much differently as they awaken That's and right. learn to understand who they really are. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's like watching light bulbs go on. It's just really exciting. And I can't, I can't say how much fun it is because it just is. It's just, and and now with me going to be out um, in British Columbia on Vancouver Island, you know, I'm going to be able to connect with graduates and students that have taken your program years ago that are all all along the coast and be able to um, facilitate and work with them. And I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be quite an exciting adventure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have four groups of students in, in Vancouver that have graduated from this training. Yes. Plus uh, a whole lot of people who have taken workshops and lectures from me. Because I used to go to Vancouver actually quite a bit. So, you know, it's been an, an interesting journey how things are changing. You know, you're moving to the, co to the coast. Let's see, I've got... Rayanne, yeah. I'm just, she just I'm, popped I apologize, up. but I'm reading here. No. I, I yes, I'm yeah, looking from forward to uh, from Carol. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, the change of <clears throat> of because uh, it's not going to be it's going to be a change, a change of place, but it's not going to be a change of of much else. I'm still okay. going to be doing all of the, the behind the scenes stuff, everyone. <laughs> I'm I'm the I'm the go-to girl when uh, Dr. Jealous isn't available. So I'll still be doing the websites and keeping up all of that stuff and doing the bookings of the appointments and the schedulings and all the stuff that I've been doing all along. It's just going to be in a different place on a, on a, on a different level, you know, and he and I will be the same time zone for, for a change. I know what's up with that. Totally messed you know, me years up. Ago, you guys should years ago. I think, uh, yeah, this June will be nine years since we started working together. And when we started first putting up the schedule, Deirdre would <laughs> schedule it in her time. And then my, time and my home is San Diego and Deirdre's home is Calgary, even though I come to Calgary often, very often. 
uh, we would sometimes have a schedule that said nine o'clock instead of 10 and 10 instead of nine. So we had to start actually writing in the schedule in the title 9 a.m. PT or Mountain Time. Oh, or <laughs> so Central be... Time or Atlantic Time, whatever the person was, and then have it relayed yeah. back. Yeah. Or Lemurian, yeah. or Lemurian Time or Atlantic Time. Or... Yeah, yeah. You know, you have to realize that, you know, we've been doing light news radio for so many years now. We've had some very interesting guests on. And the bottom line is it's really about light news. It's really about, you know, what we're doing, bringing you these these people to show you that there are really are a lot of people who are authentically walking their path. And it's not about them. It's about you. It's 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 their path walking authentically so that you say, Okay, well, what's authentic about my path? What is it about me that I have to offer the world? So everybody has something. Somebody becomes your accountant. Somebody becomes your dog groomer. Somebody becomes your intuitive counselor. Somebody becomes your pastor. And so we all have gifts. And, you know, one of my favorite paragraphs, I have to say that I was with the board of, of the Jinja, the Shride, and we had dinner uh, last Saturday night at a, a very very lovely restaurant, all authentic tofu dishes. And one of the board members, a very erudite fellow, brilliant man, he said, what are your three favorite books? Of course, he meant books by Dr. Moniyama, because Dr. Moniyama has written many, uh, probably a hundred books. Yeah. And one of the books called Karma and Reincarnation is the one that my students have to read for level 18. And so I named off my three books, but then one of the, uh, paragraphs in Carmen Reincarnation is my favorite in the whole book and it, it's it goes something like this whether adjusting the shoes in the entranceway or sweeping out the hallway the world operates by the things that must be done things that must be done should be done the reason why a task is boring to you is because you're looking at things from the standpoint of uh, the material world but from the standpoint of the absolute all tasks are the same in other words Whatever your chosen path is, is just as close to divine source as anybody else's path. You couldn't be any closer to divine source than you already are. But when we walk a spiritual path, all we're really doing is revealing what we already have. And that's what Deirdre started out by saying, is that there's a flow. And the flow is always there. It's whether we're in the flow exactly. or whether the flow is there. Exactly. It's whether we're tuning into it and being a part of it, or are we not recognizing it and ignoring it? And I think that um, there are a lot of people that are struggling because they don't yeah. have the skills or they don't have the knowledge in how to recognize it. They're worried about the get it done now rather than being present to experience it as it comes and unfolds. Mm -hmm. A flower doesn't just miraculously come out of, the, out of the, the petals into a beautiful bloom. It has to start from the seed. And it comes from the seed mm -hmm. into the stalk, into the leaves, into the flower. You know, it's a whole process. And... Um, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's like there was snow that we had yesterday and this morning here in Calgary. I looked outside and went, of course. "Are you kidding me?" But it's of it, it's about it's about clearing and cleansing. The snow, which is beautiful, yeah. sunny out there now, turned to rain and washed everything. And now we're going to have seedlings start, and the green is going to come and. You know, so, yeah, I'm looking at life a whole lot differently lately. It's, yeah. it's, it's and amazing. The flower, the flower is in the seed. The flower is always in the seed. Exactly. You just give it what it needs and, and it becomes what it is. That's why Osho said, forget about becoming. Yeah. Forget about becoming. You already are. Yes. So, you know, in, in San Diego, our bare root season, bare root, for roses is uh, January, February. Of course, you know, it only gets warmer and cooler here. We don't have any seasons like Calgary does. But when is the rose the rose? When it's the bare root? When it starts putting little shoots out? When the little buds come out? When it's a full-on bloom? When is the rose a rose, right? 
it always is. It just has different phases that it yes. goes through. So you, you are already there. Just reveal more of who you are. And sometimes it's difficult because we say, what does it look like? I don't want to do anything unless I know what's going to happen. <laughs> I really need to know. I need to know in advance. Wait, I, I want an A, B, C, D, column A, column one, column I B, can take three, this off now. Yeah. <laughs> And that's, and that's why, as Deirdre said, we go into the metaphysical bookstore and says, do you have any instant revelatory experiences that I can buy? Yeah. Well, maybe not. Yeah. And, and, and I, I told Deirdre yeah. that all, all we have to do is put on gold lame hats and uh, gold lame coats and tinfoil hats and charge $5,000 per person to say you can be enlightened in a weekend and we have people lined up out the door for all the wrong reasons i would be coming back reasons. next because life the, the way i'd be coming back ne next lifetime as a snail <laughs> if i was to do something like that <laughs> <laughs> or a slug <laughs> you always you know if, if you who are watching this program really want to help somebody else then enlighten yourself and think about how you can help that person help themselves. Think about how you can help that person see what beautiful being they are on the inside. And, and if, if you can do that, then you've accomplished a lot. And a very simple way is to say hello, give a hug, or a smile. When you... One of the assignments I give to my is... Find somebody and say, you know, one thing I like about you is, mm -hmm. and so find two people tomorrow. And uh, it doesn't have to be strangers. could be someone you know. could say, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, one thing I really like about you is, like, you know, Deirdre, one thing I really like about you is how you come up with these d is I, I really think that that's adorable, <laughs> how you can come up with these words nobody ever heard. And it's snow, snow it's, plugs. It's, yeah. Snow plugs. That's my or favorite. Humidity, or humi humidity. Yeah. Humidity. I did it too. <laughs> uh, Repitify. Uh, yes. Yes. Sounds like a Harry Potter, um, um, you know, charm that he's doing with his wand. Repitify. Yes. <laughs> and and if, okay, there are people out there who are saying, "Who's Harry Potter?" Yeah. I know. <laughs> oh, but no, I um I have really appreciated the experiences in my life up until this stage. And now um, I feel that I will be yeah. moving through to a new stage of life with yeah. a new perspective and outlook. And um, it just feels so good, even though it feels so um, disorganized at times. Uh, but life has a sure. way of you know, you, you're never, it, 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 you're never given anything that you cannot handle. And so standing there and saying it, goodbye. It, to, it sure doesn't seem. That no. Seems. And when you're standing there saying goodbye to someone that you love, um, it, it is very humbling and it is uh, very inner. It's very, and, and I, I'm looking, I'm struggling for the word and, and I'm, I'm not finding it, but it, you really see things differently. And uh, yeah. what I saw was looking into her eyes was everything and anything on a spiritual nature. Like I really saw yeah, the course. soul of not just mom, but of, what what it means to to be love and that was profound that's beautiful yeah well my my battery light just came on and said you have 13 percent battery left so i'm not sure if you'll lose me or not that's but not you may. that's not like that's ever that's not like that's ever happened to you before on our radio program oh i know I, if i'm wearing the headset the battery goes down a lot faster so but, uh, oh, is that what you're doing? Yeah, I am. Wearing I'm wearing the headset. So, but I appreciate so much the opportunity to be here today and to be able to be on the on the show and to share with individuals that um, no matter what your struggles are right now, 
someone else out there is going through the same and it's you you're you're not alone so know that there is always somebody there who can be with you or who can help you even if you don't recognize them right now or uh see them every day you know i have great friends who i don't often see that um you know i had a, a text from my girlfriend patty this morning you know checking in so it's wonderful that i have i have this now network that i've always had but i didn't realize i had and so you've always you you just have to be in faith and be in trust and i think that uh that is is so important yeah well i i think that's why we're a part of light news you know we our website is lightnews.org most people know that lightnews.org but you know you can go to that website and there's a lot of resource on there there's a lot of blogs there's a lot of information on what you can do to empower your life of course there's always the uh, the the workshops the lectures there's the the integrative chakra therapy training which you can join pretty much any time these days um there's private sessions that i offer and Deirdre offers so you know there's a lot of resources available to and you and there's nothing stopping you from and from asking questions mm -hmm. like i read on your program this and that and, and ask us and we can point you to the right resources and and richard and i are are both open to mentorship for those that you know feel that you know maybe they maybe they are not in the in the situation where they can be on a regular basis every 3 or 4 months to meet with a group but can come in and meet with a group on on the best that they can and uh you know that's yeah. it, it's all part of growth it's all part of moving forward so i'm down to 8% now so i am going to say thank you very okay. much richard what a wonderful what a wonderful okay. afternoon and uh i look forward to and working with you and with uh with everything else that's unfolding for all you lovely spiritual beings out there you are all blessed as dirty would as dirty would say we have lots on the go and more to come we do so i'm going to sign off to i'm going to sign off to dc you might as well just hang out for your remaining 8% so you know we love you guys so much and please do ask us lots of questions lightnews.org is our website So thank you so much for watching our Light News Radio Realms of Self Empowerment. I'm your host Dr. J and my amazing co-host is Deirdre Layton. And so you can catch this, I'll post this on uh, Facebook immediately afterwards and as always, as always my dear friends, may the principles of harmlessness and compassion be the ever-present, ever-constant guide of your every intention, of your every thought, and of your every action. So it is and so it shall be it is done stay tuned everyone thank you d thank you